inside the eye. I move it around and go towards the vessel where I want to be. And then I try to puncture it. Once I have safely punctured it, then I can release the system and the robot will automatically hold the needle still. That's why as we go forward, and we look at driverless cars and we look at um, medical robotics and things like that, these are things of critical importance, yeah? And we must make sure that we understand the security concerns right at the outset and plan those in, rather than think afterwards, all oh, right, how do we secure them now because there's more attacks on these systems. Demo two. Um. Katie, is it time for you to have dinner? I'm ticklish today. You need to set the timer for three minutes. Use the dial on the bottom right of the microwave. It looks like this. The solutions to our problems are not necessarily one pure technology. We gradually build technologies together. So, for example, in independent living, we may have a robot, but that robot is part of a smart infrastructure. And it's really important that all of those elements are collectively secure. So we have to do work on the security of integrated systems. What we're seeing is a number of attacks having significant impact now and that's because we are more connected and I think one of the issues around that is that we're thinking about security a little bit late in the day. These are big systems that are engineered with big impacts and we rely on them heavily and we need to make sure we get that balance right right at the beginning about what trust we're putting into systems against how well we can secure them. It was a very sophisticated tool set that, that, that's been released and it was modified. We're still looking at the Ukraine attack as to why and how that happened because it was reported that it was for money, it was a ransomware attack, but actually it caused major disruption and the money hasn't yet been collected. So do we know for sure that it was a financially motivated attack or a state-sponsored attack or something else? We still have to look at it. It's very early to work out exactly what happened in the, in the Petya attack. If you rely on a computer system and it gets some ransomware, it's locked up, you can't use it. Well, actually, if you've got pretty good data elsewhere, yeah, can you use that and a different machine because your machine is locked up, but why not have a fairly dumb terminal that can access the machine that gets you functioning quite quickly? Thereby, you're not reducing the likelihood of being attacked, but you are reducing the impact because it means you can get up and running much quicker.
they also have an invested interest to keep their customer's data safe because there's added value for them if they can ensure that the data that they're handling is handled in a safe way because it increases trust with the consumers. If I know that a company is putting all their efforts into it to making a system secure, I will trust that company with my data. So that will increase public acceptance and market value for them as well. So it's not just about legal compliance, it's also very trust enhancing if companies show that they care about security and data protection. If we see a bomb come from somewhere, you, you can see it, it's where it came from. If an attack is launched in cyberspace, so, so, so some kind of cyber warfare, who did that is, is it much more difficult, much more challenging, but at least possible in a way.